Look, I'm just sharing stories from the real, real world here. That's all, all I'm doing. But what I'm saying is, this is basically what OpenAI did, though. OpenAI was like, I'm mad at you, Google, for releasing all this rumors around what you're going to do. So we're going to put out a press release saying we're going to do those things and we're going to do them better. And faster. We're going to launch them before you. It's like, do you want to just be a little bit more on the nose about being jealous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk about how Google just one up OpenAI with Google Bard extensions. And we're going to talk about all the announcements and rumors from Google and OpenAI in their latest round of the AI wars. That and you're going to want to stick around for some awesome examples and mind-blowing use cases of Google Bard extensions. I'm Kip Bodner, CMO at HubSpot. I'm joined by Kieran Flanagan, who's the CMO over at Zapier. This is Marketing Against the Grain. Let's get into today's show. I just got a cold. I'm probably going to cough halfway through the pod. You WhatsApp me that you fell asleep in an MRI. <laughs> oh, yeah. So how does one fall asleep in an MRI? Isn't that like a miserable, loud experience? Uh, you know, there's two parts of this. So like, you're reading the book called Breath. I have been... Oh, yeah. Shout yeah. out. Go read the book Breath by James Nestor. Like, that is an awesome book. Yeah. I've kind of been doing breath work and meditation for a year and a half now. It's the single best thing that I've ever done or integrated into my life. And so I'm tired. <laughs> I just can't even, I can't, first of all, I can't even, let's just get that out there. I can't even describe how tired I am. I have been on the go for like the last three weeks. And plus I, I don't like confined spaces. And I've unfortunately had a lot of MRIs on my brain for certain reasons. And so I, I kind of know what it's like to get an MRI. Your brain is just so large. <laughs> my brain, they, 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 it's like, just so big. Constantly check why my brain works the way it does. Or like, are you sure this shouldn't really be the way <laughs> normal people actually operate, right? So MRI, you go in, it's an enclosed area, and it's just like these noises. If you've had to get us like, right? And so it's not a pleasant experience. And so I would normally just go in and go, oh, I hate being in this place, right? But I would get, I would just like, but I do in all my life, I just battle my way through it. And so I get into the <laughs> space and what I, I did 10 minutes of like breath work, meditation, breath work, and... Man, I got so relaxed. And then I was just like, <laughs> geez, it is so nice to just be like, not without my lap, no laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, and then I fell asleep twice. And I don't know for you, like sometimes when I fall asleep, I like jerk, like I'll kick my feet or do this weird stuff. Oh yeah. But it's a whole, it's a, like, it's a thing everybody does. The, I, I forget what the scientific yeah. name for so that I is. I did that multiple times and the nurse came out to me. She goes, are you okay? Like you're panicking. And I was like, sorry, sorry. I was asleep. <laughs> I was just like, don't know what I'm doing. She goes, you are asleep? I was like, <laughs> it's been rough. It's been a rough September. <laughs> I, would I would just say, if you fall asleep in an MRI, that might be a signal to, to check check your life a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you need to. I, I did actually. That you need was, to get some more sleep at least. I came out of the MRI and I was like, okay, I need to chill. I need, <laughs> I, I, I need to get some rest. I need to get yes. some rest. I need to calm down a little. Well, it, it's hard to chill when the world of AI is popping off like crazy. And... Google, there's a lot of Google rumors and there's some Google news. Where do you want to start? We got rumors, we got news. Where, where, where do you want to go first? I want to give our listeners like the three things that we are going to cover and why you have to listen to this show. Okay, let's do it. We are going to cover the thing that Google and OpenAI are going to war over right now. And Ooh. actually they are doing something that I have not seen large brands do in a long time, just like one up on each other on the PR releases when you're trying to- <laughs> oh, <laughs> our press release is even yeah. a thing? Yeah, Come when you're, on now. When you're trying to one up each other on the PR release, it's a real battle. We're gonna tell you something that we told you months ago, but we're gonna reiterate with a really great example. Why data is actually the core thing that is gonna help like distinguish who wins and who doesn't. Like AI trained on data is really where the gold is and who has access to the data is gonna win. And then the third thing I wanna blow your mind with is Bard and why Bard launched something today that I think is hugely disruptive to every other player in this space. And a huge, you told me what you did and it literally like broke my brain I, and I, I can't wait to share it with everybody. Yeah, shout out to Bard like and Google in general. They have just made such incredible progress in a short amount of time. Yeah, that's, we, we, have a, we have a lot to cover on the show today. So Let's let's get let's go straight to it. Walk us through the first one. Okay, so this was the pre this was the release from Google September the fifteenth, so not that long ago. And really, what they're saying is they are going to release. They are working on Gemini. Gem Gemini is built with multimodal from bottoms up. And for everybody listening, what the heck is Gemini? This is their large language model. This is what Google are trying to beat OpenAI with to get to like what the equivalent of GPT five would be. They want to yes. get there first with Gemini. 
So when we think of GPT-4 as the OpenAI model, the Google synonym is Gemini. They've actively said this would be better than what OpenAI have. I think yeah, that when you look yeah. at their feature set, I think this is their equivalent. I suspect their equivalent of GPT-5. And Got it. But this, I, I was talking from a brand perspective, oh, yeah. branding perspective. Once you, like, if you're thinking about OpenAI GPT-4, you want to think Gemini, they're the same thing, right? right. They're, they're a large language model that you can access through APIs to do awesome stuff. Right. And Sundar, right. I did talk about this back in the keynote in May. He talked about the fact that Gemini is going to be built from the bottoms up in terms of multimodal, but they are already in testing with consumers. And so what is multimodal? We've talked about it so many times in this show. We actually told you all this is the next wave of AI innovation. Today, all of our AI interactions are for the most part through text, right? We are querying things through text. We're getting text uh, output. And actually, AI is quite fragmented, right? If you actually think about how you use AI today, you go to some of these applications and you interact in text. We go to some of the other applications where we go to get our video, like you know, we've seen a Hey Jen and a bunch of these other ones where you go get video. Then we go to another AI app, right? And we go get our audio and Whisper and all these ones where you can get audio. The game at play here is actually having one core LLM that can just integrate all these things. Again, this is the collapsing of point solutions into a single platform. And so Google came hot, hot out the gates this week with like, we're doing this, Gemini's in testing, get ready for true multimodal. And what I'd like to point out, if we if we got in our old trusty time machine and took a trip back to the beginning of subscription software, this is exactly what happened, right? We got all these different point solutions who could do all of this, all these cool like one-off things. And then eventually some, some businesses won by creating huge platforms where you could do a variety of use cases, right? right? The same thing is going to happen in the AI space, this time with instead of just kind of subscription software hosted in a cloud through large language models and generative AI, right? Right? Like, do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I would argue maybe on a greater scale. Like, I don't know what you think through that. I, I would argue that the collapse of point solutions into platforms will be at a greater scale and actually at a scale that, could make people nervous about the future of like the startup ecosystem because if you actually start to collapse all of these products and use cases into a single platform, like where do you get the innovation from? But you you look at like how quickly Google are just like replicating all of these different products and putting them into Bard, all of these yeah. kind of point solutions and putting them into Bard. Look at what Zoom has done. Have you seen like Zoom built Loom, Zoom built like Clips, Zoom built AI, Zoom... Like these platforms are integrating these point solutions at a rapid rate. Look, I love Kieran. He's falling asleep in MRI machines. He's he's having a tough time. I'm going <laughs> to disagree with you to a point here because there's only so much you can bundle to have people actually tolerate it before it gets unbundled again, I right? Agree, like I agree with we, that. We saw that with cable TV, right? We all bitched and moaned about, gosh, I have 200 cable channels. I watch five. Why do I pay for the other 195 channels? And we're like, oh, you know what will be awesome? If we just have these streaming services that we just pay for the service for just the shows we want. And you know what happens? We get a bunch of freaking streaming services that then get more and more content and we end up paying more for all those streaming right. services than we were paying for cable. Right. This is just how the world works. And I agree with you that we're going to bundle up, but you could only have some, you could only have some certain amount of bundling. One, because users can only understand and remember so much. And two, because you do have anti-regulatory governments who are going to stop any one business from becoming too, too powerful. So let me pull apart that. So Please. I, I, I think that that is true for software as it exists with a click, click, click UX experience because it is hard to like bundle all things and make the user experience still congruent this or cohesive. This is the right argument to make. The, yeah, I don't know that is true when you're using a natural language interface. Like we are completely changing the UX experience. And so I do wonder if having a thousand apps in a core platform is hard for the user if the user is, has an incredible AI assistant to parse through all of that for them. Well, if I, uh, if this is you and I just argue with each yeah, other now. Yeah, this is what but, I actually need to keep me awake. <laughs> <laughs> but if I, but, but if if you were going to make the argument you did, which is which is very smart, the count, counter argument I'd make, well, if most of the, the way we use technology in the future is going to be natural language and through some type of typing or voice commands, right? Then it doesn't matter how aggregated anything is on the back end. We could use a host of like 100 different large language models across 500 different companies, right? Like, and... 
we could just tell the the AI, but like, oh, I'm solving, I'm trying to solve this problem. Pick the model that's yeah. going to work best for this problem, and it's going to do it. So yeah, there's going to be consolidation, but I'd argue it just as well supports fragmentation because it allows you to use very fragmented technology in a more unified way or connected way. Yeah, I so I, I actually do think that side of the back end may work, which is... I think so too. You know, when you have 500 to 2,000 open source models launching each and every day. Some of them are going to be better for some problems than others. That is your favorite AI stat. Like, I Shout know out that... to the founder who told me this because I've told it to every, <laughs> I've literally told it to everyone in the world by now. I was uh, like, Kieran has used this stat a thousand times. He's never I said the founder's that name stat. and given that founder any cred or love. Sorry. Well, the reason is because Sorry, I've dude. just invested in his company so I don't know like what the <laughs> the, the legalities are. But no, it's Noir. It's Noir. Uh, he's awesome. He told me this stat. He's building an incredible company. And so it's just one of those stats that like I was like I I because I had this feeling that one of the things that we're gonna see happen is like we already see it. Open AI and these companies are gonna ask for more regulation. And they're gonna ask more for more regulation because they know their biggest problem or biggest challenge is open source models. Because these open source models are really good. And they would like to create all of this regulation to make open source models go away. And hold, I'm hold, 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 hold on, hold on. You said you said the R word, regulation. We're obligated to talk about the Bill Gurley talk. Now. I watched the Bill Gurley talk, and this is where some of it is coming from. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kieran sounds like a man who's watched it's the Bill Gurley talk. Talk. It's such a good how this like. All right, we're gonna tell people give, give, give people up. what talk we're talking about so they could go and watch it themselves. Yeah, shout out to like the All In podcast. Put on some of the best talks that I've seen at any conference. So, they, so the All In podcast hosted an event called the All In Summit, right? Yeah, the and they all had all Summit. these speakers, and they posted the talks on YouTube. And, Bill and the most has... popular talk as, was by a famous venture capitalist, Bill Gurley, early investor in Uber, one of the most successful investors <laughs> in Silicon Valley. And he just gave a 20 minute masterclass in regulation. Right. Like, right. It was mind blowing. Mind blowing. And, and, and if you just want the TLDR, the TLDR is when the government regulates you, the, it's good for the incumbents. Right. Because that regulation, instead of encouraging more disruption, actually solidifies the incumbents and helps the incumbents grow. And he gave like every example possible and that's always happening. And so the reason, back to your original point here, that OpenAI or Google or anybody in the AI space for that matter, once regulated, because they can help write the regulation and ensure that they are going to be the winners in that battle, right? right? Right, they could put some checks and balances in that make open source models unviable for enterprise companies. Because I actually do believe in the future, just having these things plug into the right LLM for them may be the best solution. And coming all the way back to... And that's why, like, you could be right that there's unbundled in the back end, but I still think that we might get much more bundled in the in the front end. All right, you got a you got a tweet up here. What the hell is this tweet saying? So I can't find the OpenAI PR release, but this is just as good. It's from McKay Wrigley. You should follow him on Twitter. Some of the stuff that he's built with AI, I, I, he's 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 legit. He was building like the building the website with his eyes, just like really cool stuff. So Google come out, hey, we're gonna do Gemini. OpenAI the next day come out and say, hey, like we're gonna actually beat them to the punch. Do multimodal with GPT-5. Now, let's remember our history, folks. Multimodal, <laughs> let's go all the way back to November 2022. Our history, <laughs> less than a year ago. Yeah. History lesson. That's as far as I can go back right now. And so, remember one of the best product demos, I think, in recent years, like really reminded me of the Apple iPhone moments where OpenAI launched GPT, ChatGPT, and had this incredible, awesome presentation where they turned the napkin into website, right? Like really helped yeah. you understand how good this stuff is. And they had like multimodal as part of GPT-4. Now multimodal never really made it into that model or scale. A lot of people hypothesize it was because of the costs. And so they're coming back around with GPT-5. Costs are going down over time, we know that. And here they come, we're gonna beat them to the punch with multimodal. Now what's happening, there's a really good tweet here from the K. They are having their develop developer day November the sixth, and here are some of the like. Well, well, the I, I, I feel I feel a, a reaction pod coming that that day. Well, uh, we are gonna we are gonna be online for a reaction to that because I think there's gonna be some cool things. What McKay thinks there's gonna be in there is like meaningful cost reduction, right? The cost to do these LLM models and and train these LLM models is coming down over time. Fine tuning, which is in and live today, UI for fine tuning, but there's multimodal. DALI 3, equivalent, like a competitor to the Midjourney, and then ChatGPT API. Like rethinking of plugins, I, the App Store has really not worked for them. They have not found product market fit. They are just not, I don't think they're really sure of how that fits into their, their business model. But the big one here is like multimodal. Multimodal is like the battlefield 
for future of AI dominance because it collapses all of these use cases into a single platform. But you know what this is? This is like this is like the high school equivalent of like somebody steals your boy or girlfriend in high school and you get really mad at them and you go toilet paper their house and like <laughs> make it i've literally never done that have you done that that's a very american thing i feel like that's a every american teenage movie is toilet paper in houses yeah mm-hmm. I, I, yeah i've been I, I have been a part of it and, I, and i've had it happen to me it is that is just true true life facts <laughs> uh, i've look i'm just sharing stories from the real real world here that's all that's all, all i'm doing but what i'm saying is this is base. This is basically what OpenAI did, though. OpenAI was like, "I'm mad at you, Google, for for releasing all this stuff, rumors around what you're going to do. So we're going to put out a press release saying we're going to do those things and we're going to do them better and faster. We're going to launch them before you, right? It's like, do you want to just be a little bit more on the nose about being jealous? Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's like, all right, like just ship one of you ship some stuff." Yeah. Like, don't posture in public. Like, let's ship it. Let's uh, let's use it. Let's see what happens. Well, let's talk about shipping because Ooh, who is, I like, like Bar, software. Bar to shipping. Why, why, like, why don't we start with some of the advantages that Google have, right? Yes, like, let's some do of the that. advantages. That's, that's good. Why don't you bring up the, you have the real one. Oh, yeah. The, I, 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 got, I got a good, I got a good tweets to show everybody. I don't want to start a legal problems for OpenAI because I'm going to talk about something that I Slack or I WhatsApp you when we were talking about this, but. Maybe cover this and then I can talk about the hot take that maybe this isn't as much of an advantage for, for Google as yes, we think. You shared this hot take with me on WhatsApp and it kind of, I was like, damn it, he's right. And I hate that. Uh, but I, I thought I had some good responses that we'll share with everybody. Okay. So awesome tweet from friend of the show. We haven't had Rowan on the show yet. Rowan, you're going to be on the show show soon. Rowan Chung, who runs uh, an awesome AI newsletter, awesome AI Twitter, his newsletter is The Rundown. He basically said, hey, rumor, Google, Gemini, Google's upcoming chat GPT competitor, is being trained on YouTube video transcripts. That is generally fascinating. The amount of knowledge and data on YouTube is massive. Remember, YouTube is the second largest search engine. And so, wow, if, if this is true, you're like, that's a pretty big data advantage for Google, right, Kieran? You're like, they've got all this native YouTube data, They've got access to it. They've got access to it the second somebody posts something. So they not only have access to it, but they have real-time access to it. And they have native access when everybody else doesn't, in theory, have native access. Isn't this a huge, huge just <laughs> moat and advantage for Google? Why yeah, I, it? I think this speaks to the episode we did where like data is the, the goldmine for AI companies and whoever can own the data owns the AI company. It's why like, we kept theorizing or hypothesizing that Poe would be a really great add-on for Quora because Quora were struggling to monetize, yeah. really scale that company, and they have that chatbot Poe, and that was trained on Quora data. And the, the equivalent here is like they like the amount of transcripts. Like I can't even like get my wrap my head around how much data would be on YouTube when you transcribe out all those videos. No, no idea. And just incredible content from all these incredible creators. Now. It's rumored, and this is rumored from Business Insider, not rumored from Marketing Against the Green or anything to do with Kieran Flanagan. It's, it's, it's rumored that- <laughs> That is a cover my butt co- a comment well, if I've ever heard one. YouTube's Terms of Services does not allow anyone to use their data for uh, for uh, business use, right? It's Commercial could, yeah, use. Commercial yeah, commercial use. And so Business Insider had like an article where they rumored that OpenAI did train on YouTube's data. So that would be like a very odd thing for a rumor to be out there that this company who's your competitor is taking your data when your data, when your T's and C's explicitly say you can't take the data. So I think it should be an incredible advantage for Google. It should be like one of the best advantages that every AI company, any AI company has. Now we, we see this, right? We see Basically, what we're seeing is like all of these community sites selling their community's data to build AI models. We've seen it with Reddit as well, right? Reddit have done the same yeah. thing, upset their entire audience because sure. they're going to sell your data to be- train AI, AI, AI models. Elon took Twitter access away because he wants to train his own AI model on that data. So Google are using their own, own advantage here. This is an advantage OpenAI does not have because they don't, they don't have any... They're not, they're not, they're AI first. They're not like platform first, AI on top. And so I think that's a huge advantage for Google. Yes. I uh, Look, I thought you brought up some good points about maybe open AI is, is finding ways to get access to information. We don't know. We don't know. But we do know that Google has native access to it. 
right? And full control and immediate control. And that is a real advantage long term. Because one of the things we've talked about on past episodes of the show, Kieran, is personality led growth and how important personality and perspective right. and point of view is. You have all that YouTube data. You also have what probably the best personality model in the world where you could actually build an LLM that can replicate and predict personality, emotional traits more than just knowledge or strategy, right? Right, right. I think you have an, some incredible advantage. That's a, that's a model that I would love to use, like being able to like tap Yeah, in. I have no personality. I would yeah, love to yeah, outsource yeah, yeah. that. I, I need to download a personality. You Maybe that's what I'll do sick. my next MRI is just like insert personality. But imagine like having access to like all of the videos there's some like great analysis on jobs or great analysis on these entrepreneurs from different creators and you have access to just this and you can format it, get it concisely, learn all this in a really rapid fashion. So a huge advantage that this is going to be incorporated into Gemini. Yes. All right. We we actually do have some launch software, right? I'm pulling this up. Google Bard's chatbot can now tap <laughs> into your Google apps. Right. So Google Bard launched extensions, Kieran. We're showing the TechCrunch article here. What what the heck are Google Bard extensions? You've already played around. Like, what's happening with them? Right. Like, if you come back to where we are in this episode, like, we started with multimodal as a battlefield. We've said that before. We've talked about the fact that companies can build on top of their own unique data set that no one else has access to. We've talked about that before. That's a huge advantage. The other thing we talked about when OpenAI launched the app, the app store for their ChatGPT product is like, oh, now OpenAI are going to be the everything app, right? They're going to, you're going to have this one interface and you're going to be able to do all of these things through these different apps. So you just have one interface and you can access all of these different point solutions. You can access all these different points of software. Hasn't really worked for them. Like, honestly, we, we see some traction, like the Zapier plugin got a ton of usage, still does, but I think they're still trying to find product market fit for their app store. So here comes Bard with their Bard extensions. Now, a little different. This is like Bard extensions allows you to access all of Google's properties. So you can actually access maps, flights, hotels, for vacation planning. The one that I played around, you can access YouTube, right? I'll show you an example from YouTube. Yeah. The one I played around with was like YouTube plus my own G, my own G Suite. So it can just like build incredible things from your email. Like an example, I have a, I have a company who pays me for advisory and I can actually just tell it to build me a table for all of the invoice dates the amount I was paid and like, I can ask it to put some context around that. And it just comes back with the table. It's actually an incredible search functionality. So I actually asked it to like, tell me every document that I have in my Google Drive that mentioned Elon Musk or mentioned this person because I was creating content around that person. Like, it's just unbelievable the way it can capture that and build upon all of the data you already have. I had, I had a cool example of one we should do, Kieran. Um, it's late in the day for Kieran right now. And he's a little punchy. I'm tired. I'm a little sick. I'm a little punchy. We, remember, we have all that data around just our top performing episodes, right? Right. We could put that in and then have Bard go look at the top performing episodes versus the recording time for those episodes. Oh, yeah, and yeah, find yeah. If, uh, That's in true, Google actually. Calendar and find, is there a time when we record where the show's better? Exactly. And should we record more at that? At That's that time, loud. like that's like a, that's a, it's a pretty cool example. That's a cool the example. example in this TechCrunch article, by the way, is amazing. Where it's just like, oh, what dates did my friend propose to go to the Grand Canyon? Oh, can you look for flights for those dates? Can you build me an itinerary? Like that is pretty freaking mind blowing. Exactly. the 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 examples I actually asked it to build me a table of all of the most popular content that had Elon Musk in it on YouTube by views, comments, and other things. Like what what's happening here is. This is a better experience because again, Google is playing to its advantage. OpenAI does not have these existing suite of apps that people are already using. We've talked before that AI is an accelerant for existing companies and those companies are gonna benefit most. This is another really great example where Google already has these incredible products and AI just makes them so much better, right? That's one so of their core, core advantages. And so you're the fact that you can actually plan flights, maps, like all of these different things are just, next level in terms of like we're reaching next level in terms of like AI usage. It's pretty incredible. And what struck me in all this is one, like everybody should go play with this. I think there's probably going to be countless ways you and I are going to use this over the next month together, even just for the show, is that with this, Google has an incredible opportunity, Karen. They're just going to onboard the world to artificial intelligence and the world's just not even going to realize it. Right. A hundred percent, a hundred percent artificial intelligence. I totally agree. Right. It is like 
it is the ultimate like user adoption Trojan horse where it's like, oh, do you just want to you want to ask a question to figure out what when you should take this trip? Or do you want to ask a question to of, of your inbox to figure out what article you read two years ago? Whatever that may be, right? It's going to prompt users and they're just going to do it. And they're not going to know it's AI. They're not, not going to know how it does it, but it's going to be so magical that they're going to keep doing it. Right. I think that is how people get onboarded to AI is it just makes the thing they're doing already much better. I'll give you a really simplistic example. This is a hundred times better finding an email than car Google's current Gmail search. Like I was using it today to find emails. This is a hundred times better oh, to find... I, the freaking Gmail search yeah. is not, not good, man. This is a hundred times better to categorize and find things in your documents than Gmail search. Now, we are at the very start of this. This thing is going to be able to tell you when documents are updated. It's going to be able to tell you... It's going to be able to write replies for you. It's going to be able to categorize comments. It's going to be... Like, I have a folder, which is all of the Google Doc commentary that I get when I, you know, come back on Docs. And that is going to be a 10x experience when I can do that through AI, right? I Hey, categorize the comments by this person. Categorize the comments by this doc. Here's my replies. Go answer these uh, the, these comments with these replies. It's it's going to make the G Suite experience just so oh much gosh. more it's better. It's going to make it so much better than anything else. Yeah, and this is Google's advantage. Like, we talked really about the the battle for multimodal and why Google has an advantage across AI at the well, moment the, in terms of the data, in terms of the current uh, apps it already has to use AI I, with. I'm going to throw you a little bonus point that we haven't talked about yet that you're going to like. You ready for this? This is also why Microsoft gave OpenAI so much money because they have to do this to have Office be relevant. Right. They, ha they have to do the equivalent of what Google's doing with Bard with Office and OpenAI to be relevant or not completely erode market share to Google. Agreed. For the front office productivity. Right. Like, it's just a strategic must must have. That's one of the many reasons that Microsoft had to write that check and do it. Right. This is the battle. I think it's OpenAI, Microsoft versus, versus Google. We're going to see a ton of evolution and a ton of battling for for th the same type of use cases. All right. Uh, I, what, this has been a heck of a show today, everybody. We talked about some rumors. We talked about multimodal. We talked about Google's data advantage. Gave you the example of Google training Gemini off of YouTube scripts. Remember, Gemini equals GPT-4 in terms of like, they're the same things. Gemini is Google's brand for its large language model. GPT-4 <laughs> is OpenAI's brand for its most advanced language model. We walked you through some use cases of Google Bard's new extensions and we're playing around and really enjoying them. We recommend you go check them out as well. We, we even gave you a little bonus business strategy between Microsoft and Google. It's been a great episode. Kieran, I know you don't have an MRI machine at home. <laughs> I hope that you're able to sleep in a bed since you don't have the MRI machine at home and you're able to get some rest yeah. and catch up from your time in Boston, all your travels, everything that you've been, been going on. You're about to go on vacay, right? I am heading towards vacay on Thursday. I'm excited. Kieran is about to go to vacay. It's going to be awesome. I hope that you have an awesome time. We're probably going to have one or two solo shows, just me, while Kieran's getting some R&R. &R, and we'll be back real soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.